What's up, guys? Uh, we're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Um, today, we have another special guest. Uh, we have another junior moderator at MIC, a uh, two-way trader uh, in chat, and uh, his first name is Nelly. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, hey, well, so thank you for coming on, first off. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, traditionally, we kick this off very similarly to the rest, but, you know, how did you get into trading? Um, kind of walk us through the beginning of your journey and how you, you kind of found MIC and how you got yeah. there. So listen, I got that typical sheep story, right? So I'm an, I'm an old fart. I'm like 47 years old now, but uh, I, I found trading because of uh, my wife and CNN. So this is back like 2013. <laughs> and there was yep. this article that I found of like this big time multi-millionaire dollar trader that took a student that turned $1,500 into a million bucks, right? And I was like, trading's easy, right? (laughs) So I've always had a passion for like uh, the market, but I, you know, it was more the investing side. I didn't know anything about day trading until this happened. So, um, you know, I got into into that room a few months later in, and I was immediately exposed to that jungle. It yep. was chaotic. You don't know who to follow. The people who you were lo- trying to learn from, you know, they're just agitated that you're asking questions. So needless to say, I was there for like six months and I bounced. Yep. Were you but, losing you know, money? Or oh, you like, absolutely. Because yeah. I didn't know what it was doing, right? So yep. I was with this little small account that thought all I need a couple hundred bucks and a few months down the road, you know, I'd be a billionaire, right? Yep. So <laughs> typical, typical story. Yep. So, you know, I got into like Twitter because the person I was quote unquote, learning from who was my mentor, was really active in Twitter. So I started to see somebody kind of spat back at him. And it was bow, modern rock at the time. And they were just going back and forth on these Twitter battles. It was really epic. And at first, you know, I'm I'm a very loyal guy. So I'm like, who's this guy talking about my mentor? Who's the jerk off? (laughs) Right? That doesn't give a fuck. (laughs) Yeah, he doesn't. But it was really entertaining. So I'm sitting there reading through the things. And I mean, he had so many great things to really mention. And then, of course, he had the other Twitter handle, um, uh, the Trading Fish. And yeah. I just deep went into that. So then I really just like lost focus on my other mentor because it just didn't make any sense. Anytime I reached out to them, they felt, again, they were just ticked off. Uh, it just, you were just lost. So I started following him on Twitter. And then he started posting a couple of pictures of these different chat rooms. And it was just a unique looking chat room. I didn't know who it was. And then eventually I came across another I know, big trader out there and I found what room that he was in. So this is like years later that I actually found it. And this is now coming into 2017. Yeah. And now, were you finding consistency in that time? Like, were you making no, money? So, or, yep. No. So it, to me, it was more like a hobby. It wasn't like a real thing. Yep. I put like a lot of attention to it. So yep. I was working full time, did this when I could, you know. So um, it, there was there was some really no consistency there. And I really didn't know mm-hmm. how to track that. Right. So. Once I found this other room, I only went there because I saw Bao was there. Yep. And I saw everybody, I got exposed to some other big traders and it was a whole different language there. And, and it was a good room because they were teaching you how to do things the right way. However, it felt like best way to explain because I have a sports background is that I came in with this high school uh, basketball ability, trying to play the NBA level with these guys, yeah. with these yeah. big tools, bigger accounts, right? So when I look at their watch list or what they're looking for, they had like 50 things on watch. It was ETS, big caps, small caps, you name it. And there was probably the one thing I could trade. And it was the scaling apps aspect didn't make sense to me. So I didn't really connect with anybody. It was with that room for like two years and I left and I really stepped away from trading for a long time. I focused on my job, which was sales. Um, and that's what I did for a good, a good amount of time. And I just away, I stepped away from trading. So it wasn't until like uh, late 2019, I decided to get back in because I saw Bao start chirping about MIC. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I was like, oh my gosh, he's finally gonna have a room. And I saw Alex was there as well. I didn't know too much about Tasha at the time, but this is the person I really wanted to learn from, right? So again, I didn't want to go in head first into this. So I just stayed from afar. So it wasn't until like um, about March timeframe is really where 
things, a lot of my personal side started coming into play. Uh, my job uh, with my, my previous company was a uh, telemarketing company, big one, was merging with another one. So my job was on the fringes of being let go. So wow. um, I decided to take a leap of faith and I just went all in and committed to MIC. And uh, I went to a lifetime membership. I put all my poor my money into that and, and basically just put in a bet on myself because I tell you guys, like I'm a, I'm a man of faith and I had abilities to try to get back into corporate America. And I had all these different opportunities that popped up, but it kept on closing the doors over and over and over again. Yeah. And then my wife is like, listen, this has been your passion for so many years. And this is now the key time for you to be able to really take advantage of it. Go yeah. ahead and do it. That's so cool, that's what man. I've been doing here. Not many, so. not many people's like wives and like, you know, families are no. that supportive, no, you know, I especially so with blessed. trading. Like most people, like I, we've talked about this in the past, but most people you tell them you're going to get the trading. They're like, you're going to gamble. You're going to lose all this money and you don't know what you're doing. You know, so it's, it's really like refreshing to hear that your wife was like for it. I think that's cool. And yeah. I think that's badass. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, awesome. it's, it was, it's cool. I mean, it's, I'm blessed to have her. I'm telling you right now, I'm blessed to have, yeah. have her. I hear a lot of horror stories of people like, you know, what you're doing is ridiculous. Like you said, it's gambling. And I even heard from yeah. like, some other uh, the, podcasts you've done in the past that people kind of get on that. I, yeah. I have a very tight circle. You know, I'm very mm -hmm. introverted, you know, um, so I have a very small group of friends. So I've always been mindful who I'm going to keep around with around me, mm -hmm. who support them and who's not, because who's not, I'm going to cut you yep. off. And it's yeah. some of them have been my brothers and I don't talk to them about yep. trading or anything like that. So yeah, I've been very lucky when it comes to that. And I tell you what, I mean, I come from a military background as well. And this is one of the things I love about MIC is the TAP program, because I had a tight knit of brotherhood with my guys up in the military, in the army, yeah. that I would literally lay my life uh, in, in front of them because how much, how much I love them. This is the first time since the military that my TAP group, uh, which is a zipper gang, just want to give a shout out to my TAP group within MIC, yeah. zipper gang. <laughs> These were such a tight knit group. I talk to them every day. I talk to them more and I spend more time with them than I do with my own wife and kids. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this, I never felt that brotherhood like I've had with anybody else. So I will do anything for these guys. I will drive all over, do whatever it is to help my guys. So it's all because of, of MIC. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, now, yeah. have you, yeah, go ahead, Harry. My oh, no, I was just going to say, like, you know, I love that, love the kind of like that type of brotherhood and kind of, you know, just I guess just like almost like friendship every day because it's like they're almost like your co-workers every single day that you're kind of getting off talking to and kind of like discussing plans with um right I think like as far as kind of like getting into like a bit of like consistency kind of drilling down and some of the stuff like that um what would you say like I don't know like things that MIC helped you kind of get better for sure was it kind of like Alex's watch list was it kind of videos stuff like that what do you think, like, was it fantasy orders, um, you know, price action? What did you kind of do to kind of, you know, get you on the right path? I, I think for me, and my, and my, for me, it was more about the engagement that the moderators, the mentors have within the community, right? Because typically, they, most other services, they do all type of, like, they put a lot of energy to bring you into the room. But once you're in the room, they kind of forget about you. Yeah. And then I see that's the beginning of the relationship, not the, the, not the end of it. So kudos to you, Harry, and, and you, James, and everybody else in MIC, how you're constantly chirping a, a, in a chat room like, hey, I'm open up, a, a, you know, my DMs are open, or I'm going to have a trader call. doesn't matter what time of the day it is. You guys are so engaged. And that's what was different, this different for me from, from any other services because there's a lot of questions I had. There's a lot of things I didn't know. And sometimes, you know, talking to Bao or, or Alex can be intimidating because you know where they're yeah. at and you're right here and you guys are kind of like almost like the middle ground right yeah. so uh and that's what I love it's like I I, I can say I, I and that's why I told you James like you are my favorite trader and then um that's why I always I look at your charts every single day I, in my I told you before in my journal I have just charts for you and Alex alone right <laughs> yeah. and and this is and I'll tell you what what I did too and it was just like my background from my sales background I really had to humble myself because I'm an older gentleman right and sometimes you may think oh you know I know everything I know everything I don't need to learn anything from some 20 year old punk kid 
that's I, I've experienced in the uh, that in the past that you need to be open to people who are uh, smarter than you in the subject. So yeah. I really had to humble myself, and it took about a year uh, um, after joining MIC to really open it up, yeah. because I went through James, I went through your charts and I went through your uh, Alex's uh, charts because I'm more of a kinesthetic learner. Yeah, I'm learning by. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I learned by trading or by doing it, just like yep. in barber sh barbershop school. Like you yep. learn cutting hair by actually time. doing it, not yep. just yep. by hearing it or seeing it. So right. I went through all your charts and I actually had to do stats on every <laughs> single one of your charts to That's really cool. identify, like, you know, why do you got in the trade and when did you add? Because I tell you right now, my struggle for, uh, for a long time was not necessarily how to build a plan. Like I was able to picked yeah. the right stocks. I was able to, you know, do the due diligence. I, could, I was able to do that. But executing, once the, the market bell opens, and I call it like an audible, if the, my plan A doesn't work, what yeah. happens if plan B comes out of nowhere? How are you going to yeah. change the audible audible right there in a the spot? Yeah. So yeah. I, was, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to execute uh, on my plan. So I went through it. And this is where my confidence came in and cool. how to enter a trade. Yeah. And then not only that, but how to add to a winner with confidence and just looking at the stats. And I went through each of your trades and I literally just sound silly, but I pulled up the chart and I went to the chart and I was pretending I was clicking the buttons and placing yeah. the orders because it was the only way I can learn because I was doing the, yeah. the motion like that. So, no, I mean, that's how I learned from Alex because like, I do the same shit. Like I remember even before MIC, I would take his charts on Twitter, whatever and pull it up and like almost like put myself in the seat like the, and I'm like okay right. why did he do this like give me a play by play and I recorded my screens and I try to watch it like real time and and all that and I think one of the coolest things about trading is like you said you have a military background and a like a financial background but it doesn't matter like what kind of background you've had like we all at some point long or short have struggled with the same concepts right. like adding to a winner you know actually executing the plan when it comes into like to actually live trading and I think that's cool. And I think it's cool that you're a part of a group like MIC where you said you're introverted, but like you're your own personality in MIC. Like you provide so much to the community with the fundamentals, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And like, it's just cool to see that no matter what your background, you came to a group and you found like kind of like this home within MIC. Right. And I love to see it. Yeah. And that's the thing is like you, everybody was so inv in inviting. Like even like when the little greet bot comes up and just says, yeah. hey, so-and-so has, has joined. I didn't know any better at the time, but just that that first impression was like, whoa, yeah, like this is so different, right? Yep. And then be able to again ping anybody I wanted to, and they, and not only would they respond, but they they generally come from a good place of the heart to really help, and that yep. even through text that translates, right? For sure. So that now that's what really made me to to really say I'm in the right place, and it's now up to me to engage everything that MSC has to offer. Uh, unfortunately, so many people who just come, come into MIC and expect like a simple watch list or follow alerts and don't really take brief benefits of it and then they take off, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a very different community here and this is why I am committed to it. And I went, like I said, uh, head first into it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Now, uh, I guess for you now, because you've been at this now, what, almost with a little time off, like seven, seven years, right? Seems like it, but if you put See, screen time, it's it's like feels like two years, really. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and wasted time too, because yes, I feel oh like I wasted gosh. so much time. <laughs> but like for something for you now, like where you're at, what is something that you would tell yourself when you first started out? Like what would you change about your career when you first started to kind of get yeah. you to where you are faster? Yeah, really, and you've mentioned this so many times, just and we say it so many times in MSC, keep it simple. You know, have it just a simple approach to when it comes to trading. I can be my own worst enemy and yep. um, overanalyze things and make up different things in my head that keeps me for keep, uh, making a trade. Prime yep. example was on eyes yesterday, right? So I went to the fundamentals. I saw that they had a pipe uh, around six bucks yep. and in my thought process, okay, cool. They're just going to freaking create a liquidity, trap a bunch of shorts. Harry's going to love it. You know, just run <laughs> it up to the top. Right. And then eventually we're going to get that little top and then come on the backside. Well, it didn't do what I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to rip at the open, uh, trap some longs and then have that, uh, that death candle dump. It didn't, it just kind of, uh, kind of, kind of, you know, dropped there at the open, but 
um, Alex had the lines already drawn and he put that on the watch list. And knowing the pipe, knowing what the potential, the big picture agenda was there, yep. kept me to, for taking the trade. And then I see you, you start hitting those same lines. Alex hit the same lines. Bao hit the same lines. I'm like, I'm a freaking idiot. I'm a freaking <laughs> idiot. So I reached out to, to Alex that day and I told him my situation is like, you're putting too much trust in the filings and not enough in the process. Like it's, it's yeah. good to know that, yeah. like, yeah, it's good to know the filings and what the big picture idea is, but it, you know, we focus really truly the first hour of the day, primarily like the first 30 minutes is usually that the easier setups are at. And I just need to trust the process, trust the lines. Yes, I get it. But honestly, that, that w it eventually did do what I thought, but it was later down uh, in the day and I got it later on, but it was a much difficult trade than it was at the open. Sure, so Harry, how many simple. times do we talk about this? We talk about people who are just so heavy on fundamentals or the fact that the stock needs to like fade all day or whatever. And yeah. you always tell me like, you're like, dude, it, it's lines. It's price action and lines right. at the end of the day. That's all it is. Yeah, and I think for me, like I pretty much stopped reading the entire fundamentals altogether because you know, I mean, it's easy for me to just say, okay, like I'm not going to long any stock because there's dilution or because of whatever. But for me, I just take into account that, okay, I just paint them all with the same brush. I'm like, okay, they all have dilution. They all have dirty files. Yeah. They all have whatever. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to use shorts who get in early to trap higher to dilute. And I think that once you kind of understand that type of agenda, then it really becomes a lot more clear, and or at least it did for me. Right. I love that. Now, for, now, Nelly, for you, for someone who struggles with like battling themselves, like mentally, and like getting in trades and like taking the trade, like kind of what you were just saying, what is something that you're working on, or or that you do to kind of combat that to keep you in the driver's seat? Yeah, to me, it all stems to your learning style. You know, learn. You know, are you a visual, audio, or kinesthetic learner? Um, and for me, like I said, I'm more kinesthetic. So I change everything, how I learn um, into that, uh, that really falls into how I uh, learn as a individual. So keep them writing down, you know, keeping the track of all the different charts, every single charts that you post and Alex post, I go through that. Um, I've recorded a good chunk of any openers that kind of had a stuff candle at the open. I recorded those put them into a big file, which I have not shared with MIC yet <laughs> or in the tape replay, but I kept it there on YouTube for me. But it shows you every single stuff candles and just replaying it, watching the tape over and over and over again. So it's like, to me, it's like, it's almost like an athlete, like we've always mentioned before, going to the gym on those off times that you're not trading, you're still trading in some way or another by training. So yep. learning really how you uh, identify as a adult learner, then double up on that. I know Faye, she's more like a visual learner. So she yeah. can read something and get it like that. That's why she's been amazing. I'm the idiot that needs to go through all the mistakes and learn through my mistakes yeah. by doing it. Yep. And then, so that's how I, I've been progressing. So really identify like um, what kind of learner or what kind of uh, adult learner you are. Yeah. And then if you don't know what your niche is or what kind of trader you are, you are, obviously, you know, paper trader trade extremely small, but trade everything. Trade every setup yep. and find to see like what is your niche where you're comfortable uh, comfortable with. I come to find out that I'm very similar to you, James, and how mm -hmm. I approach things and how to add things. So that's why every time your videos come out, come out, I love it. I save it cool. and I review Thank it you. over and over time. That makes me happy, man. And it's funny, like Harry just told me this this morning. Like we we're on the phone, like pre market, and yeah. he was saying like someone was asking you like about if you had a crystal ball or whatever. Like, I forget, what did you, how did you even word it to me? You just, hey, you've seen well, it a million times. There was someone who was like, oh, Harry, like, get your crystal ball out, you know, go to work today. <laughs> but I mean, for me, like, I don't really picture it like that because it's like, if I have been waking up every single day for like the past four years, I'd say now, like four years, probably every single day, I've literally just woken up and watched everything just from the start to the beginning or from the start to the end, from the start to the end, from the start to the end, like after the third or fourth year, if I'm not picking up that the same things are happening really over and over and over again, then there's probably something wrong with me, in my opinion. Like, you know, like I literally 
have spent so much time just watching and watching and watching. Even on the weekends, I go over the recordings. I go over the, yeah. it's not even like I'm looking for stuff or I'm trying to get better, but like, you it's know, if you look at, if you look at like Floyd Mayweather, like, like he got good by working hard, but he also spent a lot of time in the gym. And when you see his interviews, like the other people he boxes with call him like a gym rat. Like he never leaves the gym. Like he's always there. Yeah. And that's kind of like me with this sort of shit is that like, I'm always here. Like I'm always around, you know, I'm always working on something to get better. And it's not even because I really need it or I really like, you know, knock on wood. Like, I mean, I could take the next like probably two months off and, you know, I'd probably still be okay, but I just love it. And I love always kind of working and I'm very, very competitive as to where I'm always going to be in that kind of sort of space. So, I mean, for me, I guess like the crystal ball thing, it's like, I don't really think that anything like that, it's just, I've just seen the same stuff happen over and over and over again that I know that, okay, it was like on PRPO that day where it wasn't breaking over that six level. And I was like, all right, boys, like this is not working. This is not working. Everyone nails the PRPO short. I'm like, boys, like this just happens over and over and over yeah. again. You just need to keep seeing it over and over and over again. And then you'll kind of see, I believe that you took that trade as well, didn't you? Yep. Because there yep, were a sure lot did. of people who were just tagging me after that. Like, hey, hey I got that one too. I got that one too. That's sick. And there are also a bunch of long traders who are like, bro, you just saved. I almost just lost my ass, bro. They were just messaging me like, hey, are you, bro? I would have been stopping out at five too. But I mean, yep. that's just a, an example of just seeing the same stuff over and over again and just really just getting better, you know? Bro, you're just like preaching. Yeah. And, and, and I got to tell you, like, I, I'm jealous of you two. Like, I don't think you both are either married or have kids that I know of, right? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, geez, okay, I'm going to bring up that topic. But, but you know, I, I do. And I have, you know, a lot of commitments. And I wish, like, my wife is in the background, but I wish that like, I was single sometimes. And that's all I would do. I would literally be a hermit and be here all the weekends, all every single day and just do that because it takes me twice as longer than anybody else because I have to find that time, either wake up early in the morning, like at 4.30 to find that study time. Because once everybody's up and running, I have to be the dad and I have to put the dad yeah. hat and, and take care of that. But no, I, it's like, I'm to the point, Harry, like, I'm just like, you know, I'm starting to see those patterns over and over again so yeah. i saw it on prpo yeah. i saw it today on our on our eli yeah. i took that short there so it's like now i'm starting to see that it was a funny conversation i had with my tab it was like dude like when we started this maybe seven months ago where were the idiots selling like covering into that move yeah. and now we're like anticipating that and taking advantage but still staying small until it confirms because we don't know if truly it's going to happen you have yeah. that idea but once it confirms then you take advantage because you've seen it so many different yeah. times yeah and i yeah. think also with that that's a perfect example of today on what happened there and prpo mirror mirror i examples out on what kind of happened there but it's insane how and in like you know let's say go back to that seven months ago go back to that six months ago where you guys would be covering there seven six months ago stocks wouldn't or they would get there but it, it would be okay to cover there because they would keep running right Right. Now we're right. in this sort of situation, this sort of market cycle where things are trying to break out, but they're just pulling back so much. So I right. think it's like, you know, you really have to say like, okay, six, seven months ago, yeah, we would have been the idiots covering there, but six, seven months ago, it would have kept fucking running. Now we're in that market condition where it's like, okay, things are trying to pull up, but they're not doing what they did six, seven months ago. So I don't think you're, you know, wrong for covering there or doing whatever six seven months ago because things were just so fucking crazy but now we're right. at that kind of market cycle market condition where things have been rewarding the shorts a little bit more where people like me have been putting on their preset cells anticipating those levels to fail and and not be able to break and not go higher but i mean as things start kind of changing and changing again i'm going to be like a chameleon i'm going to adapt and that's exactly kind of my mentality going forward you know no, I mean, that's a great point because I mean, it's like I have not seen all those different market cycles. And last year was different with the whole Corona. Yeah. You just threw everything out of whack, right? Yeah, but sure. I haven't seen that cycle like you and Austin, everybody else has seen that. Like sometimes these setups work now, but doesn't make doesn't necessarily in the next cycle it's going to work the same. So that's something that that's 
for me, the next, next level that I'm looking to keep yeah. track of that. So yeah. next time it comes around, I can spot that earlier versus at the end of that cycle. I'm like, okay, now I'm ready. And then a new cycle comes in. You're like, yeah. oh crap, now what? Yeah, usually by the time you think that you're ready, something around the corner is already <laughs> lurking. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. The nice thing about the nice thing about the way MIC teaches, I think, is that no matter what market cycle, the lines still work. Right. It's just what oh happens gosh. from there that yeah. changes. Right. And like like Harry is very talented at identifying that early. So like, you know, he doesn't get like fucked when long start kind of going underwater. He just yes. takes his foot off the gas and that's it. You know, but at the end of the day, he's still going to the same. Like today, for example, I forget whatever stock was running. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it was too uh, late. P A L I. Yeah, P A L I. He's like, um, I had the same line, like the whatever, something 30 cents. And he's like, yep, looking down there for like potential support. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it's like, that's it. The lines are still going to be there. But just because the market sentiment changes doesn't mean you have to trade, change your actual trading style. It just changes the way that you actually trade during the right. day. Yeah, I and think which setups for, you take for me it really affects like my targets for me as like a long trader it's really going to affect my targets like if i was a short seller i'd definitely be taking i wouldn't necessarily be looking for those outer outer lines i'd be taking those like kind of like inner lines or even lines yep. a little bit below if i was a long trader i'd be definitely looking for either outer lines and i'd be looking to sell into and not necessarily outer lines or inner lines but i i think definitely the inner lines but I'd be looking to sell at that first resistance. So I'd be looking to sell at that first VWAP test because in this market, we'll literally touch VWAP and then stop. It doesn't even give yep. you time to recognize it. So you right. have to preset, like no matter how much time you spent watching the price action, no matter how, how much time we're going to print like VWAP like a couple of times and then we're just going lower. And so I think that is something that, you know, I've just been really implementing and applying is those presets else. Yeah, I think, I think the best thing about this episode to kind of like wrap up all of these points is that what's cool about you, like watching you grow uh, as a trader, it's now knowing like everyone is different, right? In trading, like everyone has a different learning style. There's a different learning curve. Some people take a year, some people take six months like Faye or a week or whatever the fuck she made her money in. Some people take eight years like Nico, yeah. like who was in, uh, he works at SMB. I uh, know where does he work? Seven point yeah, capital. Seven points. You know, yeah. And it's just cool to see that everyone is so different and you can't beat yourself up because, oh, I see Alex is banking today and I'm not there yet. Or I see Harry's banking or James, whatever. And I think that's cool that we're in a community that basically fits to whatever, wherever you are in your journey, wherever you are on the, the trajectory to become a successful and profitable trader. It's okay wherever you're at, but you're in a good community to kind of guide you the whole way. Right. Yeah. No. And it's okay. It's okay to be slow learning. Like I, you know, I'm not the quickest learner, you know, like I feel like I'm just coming into my own as a trader three years in. Yeah. I, I'm, and listen, I, I'm the same. That's a great point because, you know, uh, unfortunately I still have a couple of people in my tab group who see the big P and L see the big, everything yeah. that's happening there. And they're like, why can't that be me? And it's, it's normal, it's, though. Normal it's normal, right? But, you know, for me, it's I pulled away the P&L altogether, even my own P&L. I don't even look at it unrealized. And yep. it's more about the chart. And, and I tell you, like, one quick example of how it really changed my mindset. It was, I can't remember the ticker, but this is a couple months ago. But it was um, a ticker that it looked like it was bagging all the shorts. Yep. And um, we were all, all my tabs were trading this. I started trade chasing the lows instead of waiting for the pops. And I got a little bit too heavy than I should have um, without confirmation. Thankfully, they came out with a midday offering and they get, yeah. I got saved. And I was pissed at myself. Even when I'm on tabs, it's like, dude, you're like the biggest sore winner that I ever heard. Because <laughs> I was so mad, not because, you know, oh, not, I was so mad more about how I traded when yeah, broken process. You're like, man, you're green, man. You're like, green is good. That's one of my, pet peeve saying green is good no because how did i get to that green point did i freaking fight all day yeah. was i down and ch got chopped up and just work tooth and nail to get to it or did i take those easy line to line trades stress-free trades and got my money so for me yeah. it's more about the trades not about the pnl yeah i love that yeah i completely agree i mean i think just to kind of end this because like we are coming up on the 30 minute mm -hmm. mark um you know you post a lot about kind of like 
like I guess like one big thing that you've really contributed is a lot of like kind of like the tape replays. Like, do you want to maybe share, sh share like what you've kind of like learned from it at all or like how that's kind of helped you at all or maybe it hasn't helped you that much. Maybe it's kind of hurt you because I've talked to people who say I put too much emphasis on the price action and I ended up not sticking to the fantasy orders and I got screwed. So maybe you can kind of go over how that journey has been as well. Yeah, yeah, believe me. I've gone through those emotions too, just like anybody else, right? Uh, but it's it, to me is I think you met, mentioned this before we had a conversation. It's the tape replay or the, the reading of the tape only plays important key levels, right? When it's important. So if there is an idea that I have or a trade uh, thesis uh, that I have, and a tape tape confirms that, that's when I can use it. But if it's in a chop and I see a oh, big, big seller here, a big sell, uh, but better here, I see them soaking the bid here, but it's in a chop, like who cares? Who really cares? So there's a time and place, just like anything else, there's a time and yeah. place in, in trading. Uh, and there's time and place when it comes to tape reading. So that's what I really focus on. I record the whole thing, but I go to those exact moments where I saw the, t the tie turn and why did it turn? But anything beyond that, before, before that, I just ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I think that's good to kind of end it on. And uh, yeah, cool. no, we great, great time Appreciate having it. you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate Thank it. you for coming on. I think there's a ton that people can learn from you. And, you know, if you ever want to reach out to him, he's two-way trader in chat. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. Well, cool. appreciate it, guys. Thank you.